Hey, good afternoon. I just got home. I got an extra 20, uh, 10 minutes to burn. Um, I wanted to, this is the book, Why Grace Changes Everything by Chuck Smith. And I just wanted to read a little section that might encourage you. You know, one of the hardest things to, is, as a Christian is, is understanding God's word and the application of God's word. And the question is, why grace changes everything? One very common way of trying to become righteous is to divide, define what righteousness is and isn't. To set up a code and then live according to this code. There's only one problem. No one ever lives up to their own code. So we conjure up great number of excuses to explain why we fail. The most common is that our failure really isn't our fault. If I drop a glass and break it, it isn't that I am uncoordinated. It's because someone caused me when I shouldn't have. Others were taking too much noise in the other room, so my mistake is really their fault. Look what you caused me to do, we might say. I say, you made me do it, so it isn't my fault. None of us like this ex want to to accept blame. This attitude goes all the way back to Adam. He blamed his failure on Eve. The woman that you gave me to be my wife, he, she, he told God, it's her fault that I am this way. Uh, Genesis chapter 3 verse uh, 12. There is a generation, the Bible says, that is pure in their own eyes, yet is not washed from their filthiness. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 12. If you think you are a very pure person, and yet you are not washed from your filthiness, righteousness has evaded you. The Bible says, if I say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us also. Scripture states our problems clearly. All the world stands guilty before God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3 verse 19. Whenever we try to establish our own righteousness, I mean, an example is that is, you know, I get people telling me, you know, about my tattoos and their sins. And because they don't have tattoos, they feel like they're more righteous than me. Uh, but, you know, but by, by them accusing me of, of having tattoos, they themselves um, become the accuser. And you have to be careful that, you know, that when you accuse people, you yourself become the accusation, and you're basically saying, you know, or or, or you know, you know, well, there's, there could be you, you drink a beer, and I don't. You do this, and I don't. Okay. Whenever we try to establish our own righteousness by keeping rules. Eventually, we are forced to admit we operate on a sliding scale. Okay? And I will always look morally better to myself than I do to you. And you will always look morally worse to, to me than you do of your, to yourself. I can look at your life and see all kinds of flaws. But when I look at myself, the few flaws I notice don't seem as bad. Okay? So... Establishing your own righteousness. If our relationship with God depended upon being righteous and good, we would never make it. Even the righteousness I can achieve by what I do is only a sh sham righteousness. The Bible declares this in the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, verse 6, says, For we are all unclean. We are all unclean. And all our righteousness... Or filthy rags. It's almost comical to see so some people parade around in their rags. They salter around with their holier than thou, thou godly kind of re re religiosity and a hyper spiritual air about them. They walk in whispered tones because they think it sounds holy and righteous. I've met people like that. I met people that they were unapproachable. You know, they would look at me with all my tattoos and stuff. And I was sincerely, but, you know, they would cast me off, you know. And they were, they basically, they were unapproachable. And, you know, you, 
and they looked at they looked down at you and they were they were supposed to be your brothers in Christ but they thought they were better right so again they talk in whispered tones because they think it sounds holy and righteous they use king james english because as we all know these and thous are far more righteous than you and yours we see them puffed up in their righteousness strutting around showing off and god shakes his head and says filthy rags if my relationship with God depended upon being righteous and good, I would never make it. I have failed. I have come short of the glory of God. The best that I can manage is when I'm I'm having a good day. Right? We're, we're having a good day. Sorry. I'm trying to get this thing going. My biorhythms are right and everything is really flowing well. I'm cool. Man, I am really something. But even on my best day, God looks down and says, Filthy rags. My best efforts simply aren't enough. Trying to keep the law condemns me. For the true law deals with the inward attitudes. Back when I labored under the standard of self-righteousness, I found I resented certain things other people were doing. I became bitter. I realized that I hated certain people and that I was jealous and covetous of the things they owned. I noticed I had violated my own code and had wiped out my relationship with God. Nothing was left to do but to start all over again. Unfortunately, just about that time, I would feel as though I was restoring the right relationship with God. Something happened. I blew up and down I went again. I would be forced to start climbing the ladder of good works once more until I got to the rung where I finally felt I, I could relate to God. No sooner would I reach that rung, however, when somebody would pull a stupid move on the freeway and I would yell at them, What the hell are you thinking? Where did you get your driver's license, you idiot? And the whole process would start again. You know, the standard, again, is the Word of God. You know, we're going to go through this book and hopefully you are encouraged by it. But, you know... I've seen in a lot of circles that people think look really bad at people with like tattoos and gangsters and ex drug addicts and homosexuals and lesbians and you know God forbid that you're a lesbian with tattoos and and all these and you you ex drug addict you know you, you got a lot of things going for you but you see God doesn't see that God wants your your heart He wants to have a relationship with you no matter where you're at God God takes broken vessels he makes them whole god takes the worst of people and puts the spirit in them and says look at you have you're more smarter you're wiser and god god is changing your life because he's working through you you know sometimes uses god uses the least of people to confound the wise so don't be discouraged if you find yourself being discouraged because of your walk join the boat all of us have fallen short of the glory of god but as you draw near to God, that you realize that it is the imputed righteousness of Christ that gives us strength. And once you have that peace of God, knowing that no matter what you do or how you're feeling, God is with you and you desire a relationship with God. You know, we all have those seasons in our lives where they're better than others. And again, you know, in it you can trust the Lord. That he will guide you and protect you and, and, and mold you in the process of sanctification. So tomorrow we're going to talk about what's the standard. And, uh, and I'll tell you that standard is not us. May the Lord bless you, be girded, be strengthened. The Lord is coming. It's coming quickly.